I'll be the first to admit that I used to hate vacuum sealers. What I didn't like about vacuum sealers was two things. One, the seals would fail almost instantly. Like you'd seal something and the next day it wouldn't be sealed anymore. And that would drive me nuts. The second thing I hated about vacuum sealers is that you'd seal something, it'd be fine the next day, it'd be fine two weeks later, then all of a sudden you realize that the seal was violated, broken, and it was just like having food in a plastic bag with tons of air around it and ice crystals around it. And I largely gave up on it. I still do not use vacuum sealers for red game meat. Not that they're not suitable for it, but just I think that something better is to use saran wrap like this, like plastic wrap and waxed freezer paper. However, I do use vacuum sealers for fish. I use it for game birds. I use vacuum sealers on ducks. I use vacuum sealers on sausages. And these are things that I think of that are more susceptible to freezer burn, that it's harder to get all the air out when you wrap it with saran wrap. Like when you wrap sausages, it's hard to get saran wrap to conform to the edges of the sausages quite like it is here. And I just feel like I'm getting a better seal, better product, and, and more shelf stability. Also, fish is just a lot more temperamental than red meat. It needs a tighter seal, less air, and I just find that I get better storage and less like skanky fish by freezing in vacuum bags rather than wrapping with saran and freezer paper. Now, I'll share with you some of the tips and tricks about using freezer bags that I found over the years that have, that have enhanced my love affair with, with vacuum sealed bags. First off, right here I'm running a Weston vacuum sealer. It's called the Pro 2300. For what I've seen for like household sealers, this is a great model. It doesn't mean they're indestructible. You gotta treat the thing with respect, keep water out of it, keep it clean, not overheat it. The manufacturer on this one suggests waiting 20 seconds between seals. That can seem like a long time if you're trying to seal 30 bags or something. But just take your time, treat the thing with respect, it will last a long time. Another thing I find that people do that's really hard on their sealers is they're pushing down on the door too hard. This thing has rubber gaskets, top and bottom. If you compress it too much, you harden and pack in that rubber gasket and you won't get a tight seal anymore. Another thing is they're letting too much water from their fish or other product get up into the sealer and get on the sealing tape and get on the gaskets and fill into some little cracks and crevices and that can lead to destruction of your sealer. So really keeping the thing good in many ways comes down to just treating the thing with respect and adhering very carefully to the manufacturer's specifications. Now what I found and I see this often is guys will overstuff their vacuum bags. I think they're trying to conserve on bags, save expense. They'll overfill the bag and they'll get the meat oriented so that it's running from border to border. Like picture that I would have these sausages, how I, I put them like this, so the bag's oriented this way, the opening here, I have the sausages in like this. Let's say I had turned them and put them this way. What you can do when you overstuff the bag or get it sitting crossways to the flow of the air is that you can form a little seal or a little gasket then when that motor is trying to pull the air out of the bag, it simply can't get the air down here past the meat that you've overstuffed into the bag. So with sausages, you can do it by just putting them in the long way and you have air channels between each of these sausages where the air can travel out and you get a tighter seal. I have a tight seal here, I have a tight seal here, all the way around. Same with this fish. I left room to spare all the way around this fish so that the air has a good way to get out. Another thing, fish has high moisture content, okay? And one of the things that can corrupt your seal and that can damage your sealer is if you're getting a lot of liquid, when the vacuum's pulling and it's pulling out air and it's pulling a lot of liquid from your product and it's pulling up little rivulets of water that will come up and they'll cross this barrier where the sealer is gonna hit, where the sealing tape hits. When that sealing tape goes to burn in that seal, it can't get a good seal because you've got moisture there. I mitigate that in two ways. One, with fish, stuff that I know is high water content, I just wrap it in plastic wrap, a nice tight wrap. Now, another thing I've done in the past, and I, I don't, I've never seen anybody else do this, I'm sure they do. I, if I have something that's very wet, I will take a paper towel and roll that paper towel up into just a little baffle that fits right across the bag and I'll put the meat in there and I'll lay that paper towel right in there. So it goes from edge to edge. The air can draw through it, but the paper towel absorbs a lot of that moisture coming up. 
and you hit the ceiling, you'll watch that moisture will go up, it'll hit the paper towel, the paper towel will absorb all the moisture along that line, and it'll burn in a perfect seal. If you draw a vacuum on a bag, and then hold it up, and you see like a little spot you don't like, I just go, and I don't need to reseal it yet, because I still got a tight seal, it hasn't leaked through yet. I go in and just do a manual seal, and burn in another seal right here. Or, if I notice that I have a lot of water in my bag, and it seals and I can see the, the plastic was wet, I'll just take a paper towel, dip that paper towel in here, swab this area dry, and then burn another seal in right here. You can't have too many seals. You could do three or four of them across here until you get one you like. So pay careful attention to that. Finally, a thing I found about using vacuum bags is they are not puncture resistant. I used to get into a lot more trouble with vacuum bags during the many years that I hated these things because I would handle them too roughly. I used to just throw them into a cooler, bang them around in the cooler, and over time I'd realize that all these bags were starting to fail. It's because they're getting little holes in them that you can't even tell are there from you jostling it around inside your freezer. So I now know, treat these bags, I mean, you don't need to treat them like glass, but treat them like something that is, which is like a precious, commodity to you. When I fill my cooler now, if I'm leaving my fish sack, I'll lay down, if I have a lot of stuff, I'll lay down a layer of these bags in the bottom of the cooler, put down a couple pieces of newsprint as padding, laying down another layer, more newsprint. It insulates and it protects. And in my freezer, I handle them gently. I handle them with respect, move them around, don't throw them. And I have nearly eliminated bag leakage or failed bags. And I would eat this without hesitation, one year from now. And I'm telling you, if you challenge that with a fresh sausage made that day, I don't think you would know the difference. So it's a great tool if you use it right. I do recommend vacuum sealing if you have the money for it and the time for it and the discipline to do it properly.